Okay, so let me randomly call names. I'm going in the reverse order. Pratik Garg. Oh, you are not Pratik Garg. What's your name? Did you make a presentation last time? Good, then you come. Sir, he's here. Right? So, hello friends. Uh, so, today I am going to talk about trust. Uh, maybe every day you li in your life you meet some uh, stranger. So, it depends on that uh, uh, how you believe that it is a trustworthy person or not. So, the, in the TED talk uh, I, pre uh, I uh, presented or uh, I written that uh, TED talk, uh, she was a uh, Aimed, out, uh, aimed on uh, describing that uh, what is the scenario in the society of, upon uh, this trustness. She says that uh, uh, today uh, this media is uh, highly responsible for this, uh, this belief that uh, many persons uh, are likely you see that uh, today scenario, there are two persons, one is Kejriwal and one is Modi. So there are many persons or sometimes uh, you will be feeling that uh, Modi is right or sometimes you will feel that Kejriwal is right or sometimes again you will feel that no, 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 Kejriwal is doing something wrong and Modi is right. So what this exactly is? What we uh, get from the media that is only we are processing and on, those, uh, on that basis only we are uh, believing on someone. We don't know what exactly is there. There may be many things that is hidden uh, behind the, this uh, whatever we are seeing is there may be uh, some raw facts which is uh, hidden from us. Like the secret video leaked about the Kejriwal that uh, he said that this particular uh, uh, part of this video must be highlighted so that we can get more votes. Or this thing may be going on everywhere. Every politician is doing some same thing. So she is saying that uh, media is a highly uh, dominating uh, factor in the trustness that you, uh, that you are following. She says that uh, the process, uh, professions which were trustworthy before 20 years, like uh, teacher. teacher is a pro teaching is a profession or teacher is a person who is uh, more trustable uh, before 20 years, is uh, also today in today's, in, uh, today's scenario also is a more trustable person. But leader or politicians, they were not trusted 20 years before and not even today. So, uh, my point is that fine, she is saying uh, approximately right only, but uh, I think that uh, uh, when we come to trust, our brain is enough trained uh, in, uh, maybe we all are uh, above uh, 25 plus. So our brain is enough trained to uh, get some signals or some processing so that you can just by looking at someone or just by talking 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you can uh, come to a uh, conclusion that should we believe on this person or not. So this is fine. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Uh, the talk I am going to present is what Facebook and Google is hiding from us. Uh, <coughs> actually, Mark Zuckerberg said that the uh, squirrel which is lying in your neighborhood is it, is of your more interest is of your more interest than the <coughs> than the people dying in Africa. Uh, why he said this? Because uh, because someone asked him about the news speed. So what is the importance of news speed? On that uh, <coughs> on that he told this. So uh, what the uh, what the presenter is saying that uh, today's world is very much customized. Like <coughs> like if we go to the Google, then uh, if we go to the Google, if two person searches the same. Uh, search result, then they will get the different results because the G Google is customizing the results. <laughs> it is manipulating the results on the basis of uh, user's location, user, what the browser user is, uh, what the browser user is using, what the system he is using. So on base, uh, on on this basis, the Google is filtering the results. So, so the uh, presenter said this is what the problem is. Because the Google is showing what we uh, Google is showing what we want to see, not what we need to see. So uh, basically, <laughs> over the 20 years before there was no internet, 
after the internet the world uh, world become the world become open source but now we have developed some algorithms uh, which are doing some filtration so because of the, fil the because of this filtration uh, because of this filtration we are not deciding what we get uh, what we get when we searches or what we get when we see anything on the internet so the presenter is having problem on this so basically my opinion on this talk is the <coughs> the presenter is right because uh, google and uh, yahoo like say facebook they are modifying the search results because for their profits uh, because of their uh, because for their uh, profits so thank you that's it just a couple of quick questions Daniel, uh, you said Google shows what we want to see and not what we need to see. Uh, Actually, there should be uh, uh, there should be balance. What uh, because Google should uh, Google should give us option that these are the search results and these are the search results according to your uh, search and these are search results we are suggesting that so there should be a balance what pre what presenter is saying that google uses approximately 15 signals before giving us search like where where what is our location what is your browser which system is using so that is not acceptable But the presenter asked two of his friends to search the same query on the Google, and they got two different results. Yeah, that. Yeah. 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 That should be kept with the user only. These signals are to be interpreted as what I want to see or these signals should be interpreted as what I need to see. More important question, can I ever specify what I need to see? If I knew exactly what I needed to see, I probably need not have any search. So any answer? Anybody? He is now expanding the horizon of the question. The size of the database that Google handles is enormous. And the fact of life is that we will never ever be able to go through each and every answer that a search engine gives. Uh, I know few context, I mean, scenarios where Google doesn't have information. I can write it and show you. Okay. You, you have some more. Yeah. Actually, this is a very critical word. I was discussing with one of my friends. And what we consider is, let me give you one simple example. I'm the most, uh, I, I love, 
I like Modi, okay? But uh, generally, whenever I like some politician, most of the time I uh, feel good to read about them. And uh, I will read about this some other politicians, especially open about those people, then there is some big news about them. Okay, this is the reality. Now, when some of my friends from ISA Kolkata pointed out about the RTI activist in the Special Gujarat and Portland that they take about the same mafia, when I read about that, that at that time I come to know that uh, it, this is a very close to my native place and uh, it was uh, seven years ago, but still I would not heard about that. Okay, so what I did is I tried to follow all politicians, I mean, Kedriwal, Rao, including Rao Gandhi, every politician on, on a Twitter, on a Facebook, and after that it keeps giving me results about that, every politician of us, we good, everything. So, if we plan accordingly, then I think we can sort out this problem. Uh, so, you get one more input into the way we think. By the way, it's, it's a very interesting thought. I don't know how many of you have analyzed yourselves in terms of thinking that you do about an issue at different points in time. It is not that you have fixed thoughts in life. Every human thinking process is affected by a variety of things, including our mood, the situation at hand, our background, our liking, disliking, and our instant liking and instant dislike, which may change. The fact is that our thoughts change. But the basic point still is not answered. Who decides what I need to know?
what the students need. Let's examine this to some detail. When we are growing up, we generally depend intuitively on our parents and elders believing that they know what is good for us. Or at least that is what they tell us, that we know what is good for us. In India, unfortunately, this situation prolongs. I mean, uh, in, the, in the Western world, people start taking decisions independently much earlier. I remember, for example, when my mother told me, Deepa, you still cannot take correct decisions. I had to point out that, my dear mother, I am 60 years old now, <laughs> or 80 years old. <laughs> but the fact of life is, mothers won't ever change the opinion that their children cannot be spared. So that's all. The point is this. Can I abrogate my responsibility of deciding what is good for me, at least at some stage in life and beyond? Or should I depend upon always some external agency, whether it's a teacher in the class, whether it's parents, or whether it's somebody else, to decide what is right for me? So independent of who gives me, whether Google search or press gives me right or wrong is a different issue. Basic issue is who should decide. <coughs> My own feeling is that each one of us must decide what is right. The problem is we are tempted to spend time on things which are not necessarily right for us. Many times we realize that we are spending time on things which are not really right for us. The purpose of external agencies, whether it is parents, teachers, or friends or seniors, is to sort of veer us around the path, saying, I believe you are not doing this right, please try to make this right. That's probably the best thing that external agencies could do. But at the end of the day, as a human being, I have to take off. Coming back to the search, how do we deal with the information explosion is a problem today. It did not exist 100 years ago. It did not exist 40 years ago. It did not exist before the advent of the The information explosion that has happened today did not exist at all. People depended on published material or printed material. The great Gutenberg invention, the rules are books. Whatever was printed and available was was, is what was available. And that is why the print media and in terms of the facts of happening and the books and journals were the sort of essence of truth as far as people were concerned. We have changed all of that. In the web, how do you take a call on what is right or in fact what is completely right? Then you get one lakh answers to any question. And when you know you will not go beyond the first page of second page. So let me ask you this question. Forget Google, whether it's Google search, Yahoo search, or whatever search that you do, you would have done thousands of searches by now, by using search engine or something. What percentage of time you have gone beyond the first page of search engine? What percentage of time? You have gone beyond the first page of the search. Point to two percent. So generally everybody seems to agree. On very, very few occasions you go beyond first page. What it means is that Google or Yahoo or a search engine is deciding for you both. What you want and what to need. You get the implication. Now this itself is an important lesson in effective communication. So when you want to emphasize certain points to your friends or in your communication, in, in research communication or whatever, you state that prominently at the beginning. So that is what is read for. Even in a printer. Take newspapers. There are many pieces of news which we read in details. But we do read all headlines. We scan through all headlines. 
you take, let us say, the approximately 50 to 60 headlines in the newspaper. Okay. How many of those 60 headlines we actually read through the retail news? Again, a very small percentage. Now, the interesting point would be which particular headlines you decide to read in details. That's your decision. And there have been very interesting observations on this, but sadly it so happens that the negative happenings are read in great details. In every newspaper or every print media or even on television channel, there are positive happenings that are reported. The mind is not attracted to it. So how many of you who TV watch Animal World, for example, or the History Channel? All the channels are available free. We don't. So whether the, the media is creating some kind of bashan in our mind, I do not know. But just this fact that at the end of the day, you and I have to individually decide both what is good for me, that is what I need, and what I want to see. I think both decisions have to be taken by us. Sorry for taking your time, but the, the previous thing may talk triggered a whole lot of ideas, so I thought I'll discuss uh, in with you. The moral of the story is A, do go beyond first page of any search. And B, do read a few more news items in details rather than just skipping over the headlines. That is useful in life, that's all. So, neither what I want nor what I need, but I am suggesting that going through larger pieces of information may be more useful for me only to decide both what I want and what I need later. Jyoti Shankar. The, the TED talk which I went through was, uh, the title was uh, uh, The Riddle. Uh, uh, the riddle uh, was of experiences versus memory. The TED talk was presented by Daniel Kahneman. So the idea was, uh, the, the basic idea of the talk was, uh, what, what is happiness? What, what basically is happiness? It, uh, so the uh, speaker, he, uh, he presented two notions of happiness. Uh, the w one notion was uh, uh, the experiencing self, and one notion was the remembering self. Uh, so, uh, the, actually what uh, he presented was uh, the, uh, the experiencing self, it, uh, it deals with the experiences, what a person went through his, his or her life. And the remembering self, it, it deals with the memories. So uh, he, uh, he, uh, uh, he specified that uh, both, both, are, uh, uh, both are very different aspects of happiness. Uh, the, the experiencing self, it, uh, it deals with the experiences that a person, it, uh, he experiences in his or her life. And the remembering self, it deals with the memories. Uh, he gave a lot of examples uh, uh, illustrating his, uh, his talk. Uh, one example was uh, 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 he, uh, he just went through a study on, uh, for uh, two patients. Uh, and uh, he he uh, uh, told that uh, uh, the the uh, happiness the notion of happiness it uh, it uh, uh, it uh, uh, got reflected by uh, the the how how the experiences how it ends and uh, he also told that uh, the experiencing self and the remembering self they they differ. Uh, they differ from each other by uh, handling of time. And, uh, and he concluded his talk by saying that uh, it, is, it is a very uh, big, uh, uh, the, uh, the horizon is very big of, the, of these two aspects. And uh, uh, he told that the, uh, both of these aspects are very different. And uh, he tried to uh, give the, uh, give this idea that uh, Happiness, it uh, it just cannot be uh, yeah, cannot be uh, 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 the happy. This 
this notion, the, the notion of the happiness, it just cannot be illustrated by uh, saying, uh, asking a person that whether, he, uh, what is, uh, what, how he uh, grades his or her life. I mean, uh, if he said that, if he say like uh, he, he rate his life 8 out of 10, it doesn't mean he is actually happy. It is, it is his experiencing self that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, according to which he is saying that he is happy. But uh, what the speaker tried to say that uh, uh, the, the notion of happiness is very, uh, I mean, uh, both the two uh, notions, the remembering self and the experiencing self, both are two different aspects. Thank you. Can you figure out what is happiness? Sir, uh, he... Uh, no, no, not him. No. <laughs> <laughs>
we are all optimizers. Like what is the objective of registering for a course? Bracket A generation. It is a fundamental object. Secondary objective is also to incidentally learn something. <laughs> <laughs> so similarly, the fundamental object of human life appears to be to be at the highest state of happiness always. Now if that is the objective, how do we achieve it in our different ways? In our own ways. So one possible way of looking at it is we tend to avoid doing things which we believe might bring unhappiness. We tend to spend time in doing things which we believe will bring us happiness. Is that, would that be a correct statement? <coughs> in general. Maximizing happiness, in my own opinion, is an individual phenomenon. My own conviction is that the day I let my happiness be decided by anything outside me, I am good. Happiness, in my opinion, is a state of mind. And if I don't control my state of mind, then I am subjugated to all these things. My life is not under my control. So I would submit that one should try to feel happy in each and every situation. You are going for climbing and you fall down and you are saying bread. You should still be able to laugh at you and say, Are you? Is it that good? <laughs> Not easy. Not easy. Anyway, these are personal opinions. But I am happy that people are looking at different tech talks in different ways and at least contemplating. From the communication point of view, I would like to mention that uh, uh, in these three minute talk that I have just seen this sample and the last time on the video now. Uh, I don't think you have research, uh, you have, uh, not research, but you have practiced sufficiently to give these three minute talks. Have you? Have you practiced sufficiently at home to give these three minute talks? So how many of you did two or more iterations of speaking with a watch, three minutes? Two or more iterations. Once, many people were crying. <coughs> One minute. That's all. Nobody has attempted to do this twice or more, practicing speaking for three minutes. <coughs> You forget two or more times. How many of you have tried it doing once at least? Not even once. Oh my God. Uh, that is not the way for effective communication, let me assure you that. We all need practice. And it is the practice, preferably with somebody else in attendance. Because as you know, when we are speaking, it is less likely that we will notice our errors. Somebody else is more likely to notice our errors and point out. So such things should always be done in pairs or in larger. That's the reason why these video recording of my session that you come here and speak for three minutes is merely to give all of us a chance to look back at ourselves. What did we do? What did we speak? When we are speaking, we believe that we are speaking coherently. Only later, when we look at the video recording, we notice the ah and who and, and, and mistakes in English that we make and so on. And that should tell us that we have not sufficiently practiced. Practice is absolutely essential. I remember, I, did I tell you that what I did when I became a teacher here? I actually purchased a tape recorder and practiced for speaking for one hour giving a lecture after preparing for that lecture. Recorded it and then heard that lecture again. And what I heard was full of mistakes, which I did not realize while speaking. So I re-recorded it and re-heard it again. This is the Godagini you have to do to be able to communicate properly and correctly. That is because this three minute thing, by the way, I'll tell you something. Three minutes is not an arbitrary number. It's not long enough 
so that you can flow in your thoughts and somehow conclude properly. Three minutes is not very short, then it becomes only an impulsive communication. Three minutes is a substantial time. But to use those three minutes is not easy. I think uh, they, they mentioned it, Professor Prakash Vicky mentioned it last time that I wanted to write a short letter, but I did not have time, so I wrote a long one. <laughs> so that is the meaning of this three minutes. I would strongly suggest that you should prepare yourself for this three minutes. I wanted to conclude this, but I would like to suggest the following. Those of you who have not yet been randomly shortlisted to speak here, we'll get one more opportunity next time. But I would not like anybody to come here and speak for three minutes without any preparation. Imagine that those three minutes are the most valuable three minutes of your life where some hundred minus absentees, so maybe, you know, maybe at, least, at least 70, 70 people have no choice but to listen to for those three minutes. Can I make the most out of those three minutes? Can I exactly tell everyone the gist of what I have understood from that TED talk in exactly three minutes? I would submit that if I were you, I would practice speaking it four or five times. I'll actually write it down, read it. It is not by heart. It is not by heart, but it is definitely preparing her. You know the best speakers that you listen to and their talks appear to be natural talks, free flowing talks. It appears as if they are not prepared at all. Those are the most well prepared. Those are the talks behind which a huge lot of effort should come. And that is important. If you cannot speak well for three minutes, then you will not be able to speak well for 15 minutes making a presentation on your research report or on your life. Otherwise, what is the most dangerous thing to happen would happen. Namely, you will end up reading your slides. Or you will end up only stating facts that you have found out in your research. Not stating the conclusions with the right references. Not being able to dissect the basic idea behind whatever you have presented. You will only be stating facts. That is not what you want. You want to get across, to capture the mind of your listeners. And that requires effort. So may I request those, uh, why those, although everybody actually, I mean, uh, those who have been randomly selected and already given their finished stock, they should not go home and say, hey, you come with Karnak and that. That is not fair, because the idea is that each one of us, through this course, gets a chance to become better communities. So this is this is my request. It will not take too long, but it will take about two hours. It will not take less than two hours to prepare for a three-minute talk. Two hours is a reasonable time that you spend. If you have to give a fifteen-minute talk, you will not require eight times the two hours. You will require only three hours. But preparing for a three-minute talk will take. You will have noticed, although the speaker would not have noticed, but you would have noticed that there were errors in plain English syntax and grammar. I still appreciate the fact that people came and spoke, and most of the people who spoke did speak for three minutes. So to that extent, they had a sense of time. It is very good. It is good news that given an opportunity to talk for three minutes, I don't talk for 20 minutes. And I am still able to conclude generally what I wanted. That is good. But it needs to be perfect, do you agree? It needs to be perfect. And that perfection will only come when I practice again. You have a mirror in your room. Just stand in front of the mirror. You don't require a tape recorder. I have a tough time. My salary was 350 rupees and the tape recorder cost me 750 rupees. It was a heavy investment for me as a young teacher. But today you have your uh, mobile phones or laptops or whatever. You can have your record. But please do that. So the next time, a few more samples that we would have. Thank you so much.
You might have heard old Hindi songs, which are still popular. The length of the song used to be exactly 3 minutes 10 seconds. So that was the number of gurus which would permit. And one Bismillah Khan, who also you must have heard, Shahnai Nawal. Once he mentioned, हम बुजुर्ग लोग जो तीन घंटे में करते हैं, वो बेटी या निलता उम्मीद कर तीन मिनट में क्रिकेट कर। It does not mean that three hours is not useful, because if you want to enjoy this pleasure, you have to spend three hours. But anyway, what I wanted to say is that the Bismillah Khan was one of the greatest singers of the time. Requirements come in various forms. What we are trying to do through this mechanism is to understand how to present something in a short time. We will also have a pleasure to understand how to present it in a longer time. Uh, everybody is working on that uh, 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 research survey work that I have mentioned. They all started working on it. All of you have gone through Sahana Muthi lectures. <laughs> the links have been put up. Oh my God, this is very serious. Now I understand why a teacher in a classroom is required. That's the only time when your whole school is to a teacher. At home, when you are not told, you won't listen to it. That's not good. By the way, the objective of those two lectures is actually to help you do something better. <coughs> it is not for the sake of the course of the grade. You know that there are no grades in this course. It's a pass fail course. You also know that I do not fail somebody unless there is a very compelling reason for failing them. <laughs> like if our friend Rudra Mundi <laughs> 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 But the fact of life is that those two lectures are two of the best lectures giving the essence of how to go about a certain matter. Uh, can I expect that at least in this weekend, all of you will go through those lectures. I even circulated a printout to the paper so that you have the printed paper near you when you listen to that. I, I believe it is very important for you. So, this is not what you want to do, it is very apparent. But this is what you need to do that much I tell and, and if passing or failing the course is the only reason why you will do things, so be it then. <laughs> So I will conduct a quiz in the next class based on those two lectures. And the quiz results by and large will decide whether people will pass this course or not pass. Is that a fair enough compression? No. <laughs> well, there are only two choices. Either you do something on your own or you do something with the other way. And uh, you must generally don't get both choices. I am giving you both choices. Either you do it on your own, or do it because you love it. But do listen to those two lectures. And uh, that should help you actually in writing your own literature survey in a better fashion in my Thank you.